help me. Thank you. We're recording. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do this, my friend. I'm super excited. So let's start saying hello, hello, hello to everybody who's joining this amazing, amazing time that we're going to spend together. Hit. Welcome to Hit Talks. Hope, <coughs> inspiration, and transformation times that we are. In. Let me see. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you are in the world here. I am Veronica Sosa, your host, producer, sorry, today. And I'm super excited to be sharing this moment with you. So let's start saying hello. Where are you? Where are you connecting from? Let's see. Let's see here, I wanna see your type in. I am in Belgium right now. There is people from England, there is people from where? Let's type, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, okay, okay. Today we are just starting the second Hit Talks and we have amazing speaker from all over the world. And we're gonna have a, a, a time to enjoy and to listen to amazing and inspirational words that are going to make us travel and enjoy and possibly change into amazing beings that we are right so let me see where the we are coming from where are you coming from from montreal wow 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 from england meanwhile we're saying hello i'm gonna invite my the super creator of he talks. Oh so let me put the mute. Everybody mute. Please, 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 please. Let's see. Muting the mics. Thank you very much for muting the mics. Thank you very much. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited. Are you excited about? Let's bring on Vicky Thomas. Vicky, Vicky, welcome, my love. How are you? Let's see, let's see. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? We're so excited to have everybody here. And I'm trying to mute the, the beautiful birds that are sitting <laughs> One second, one second. Right, everyone is muted. Can everyone hear me? Hey, hey. Right, let's just do this before we get in. Hey, hey, I'm here. <laughs> right, welcome, welcome, welcome. So what's going to happen is just for, for the admin here is that um, people will start coming into the room at, um, at different times. So Veronica, who is our producer, is going to pin everybody's video to the, uh, to the screen when you come on and talk. And I am super excited to have everybody in the room. And welcome, welcome, welcome. If there's any messages that you want to put through the chat, um, Veronica will be there to answer them for you. And I'm just so blessed that we're going into this third let's say, let's say transmission let's say episode let's say broadcast of hit talks now hit talks it is hope inspiration and transformation now i'd like to take you on a journey a journey of the evolution of the world because 36 years ago that there was a let's say a platform that was created and this platform was all about sharing inspirational messages and it was all about sharing ideas that were worth sharing. And it was, it was a platform where people could speak for 18 minutes. And then when people could speak for 18 minutes, then it could be shared with the world. However, the world has changed. The world has evolved and people's attention spans have evolved. <laughs> and I don't know if like me, trying to watch something for 18 minutes or 20 minutes, my attention span is like, Woo! so, you know, it's a new world, it's a new era, and it's new ideas coming out, coming out. It's, you know, I call it a paradigm shift. 
And, and so then there was like this download and then there was this brainwave and it was just like, oh my gosh, there is so much going on in the world. You know, there are so many people that are kind of butterfly in their eyes open of a new world, of a new era, of new things that are actually, you know, going on. And people are butterfly in their eyes open thinking, okay, well, I don't want control. You know, I don't want, you know, I, I don't want to be in these corrupt environments and things like this. And um, I was there thinking, I love talking to people. I can't be out on stages now because of, the, you know, Corona and lockdown and everything else. And I just had this massive download and speaking to, uh, you know, my friend and um, partner, um, Rick, who's, um, who's an inspiration as far as this creation is concerned. And it was like hope, inspiration and transformational talks. Eight people, eight minutes, eight different perspectives. So I have to say the new paradigm, the new future is hit talks. It is ordinary people sharing ordinary messages all over the world. So then we can actually spread some hope, spread some transformation, information, <laughs> spread some transformation and broadcast it. And it's just been amazing how I just feel totally blessed. I'm, I'm humbled. I'm in so much gratitude to every single person that comes on to support this vision, because this vision is so much bigger than me. This, this vision is not about Vicky, I promise you. This vision is about serving the world, serving humanity, serving you know, the new era, the new world, the new paradigm shift, and we're all in this together. So I am buzzing inside because I say, this is the third one. It's gonna get different, it's gonna get better. And as a baby, you know, you nurture a baby and it grows up and this baby just comes absolutely amazed. Well, I wouldn't say that I've got a 19 year old and a 17 year old, so, <laughs> but you know what I mean? And so it's actually just nurturing it. And I just, you know, I'm just so blessed that is this is really gonna grow. So honestly, from the bottom of my heart, people that are listening live, people that are listening to the recorder, uh, recording, you know, the speakers on this episode, the speakers on previous episodes and the speakers on episodes to come. I love you so much and thank you for so, so much for being part of the birth of Hit Talks 2020. Ah, oh my gosh. <laughs> so as it is, it's eight speakers for eight minutes and they're going to share from the heart and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about whatever comes through. You know, there's no control in this. I don't give anyone any agendas of what they've got to talk about. You know, we are all in, as say, a new paradigm, a new era, a new shift of, you know, supporting humanity, supporting the world, supporting people. And I'm just blessed. And so the first speaker I would like to bring on, I wanted to really change this up a little bit and interview this lady because we met in St. Lucia. Now, just a bit of background is that I can't have any of these hit events without having St. Lucia in the house because it's my second home and I absolutely love it. And um, Naomi and I were invited to the Prime Minister's Ball in St. Lucia and we, were, we, we, met, we met there, but we didn't really get to connect properly. And you know when you actually meet somebody and you know that it's kind of a soul meeting? And I was just like, Naomi, please, please, can you actually... Just be part of this. I'd love to hear your story. You know, she does so many different things, um, you know, from a TV presenter to podcasts to property shows with kids, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I would like to welcome to the floor um the amazing Naomi. And I'm just gonna ask Naomi a few questions. Um, so Veronica, if you can pin Naomi onto the screen, that'll be amazing. And we can welcome Naomi to Hit Talks. <laughs> Okay, I will pin Naomi to the screen. Let me um, unmute you, babes. Hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> How is everybody tonight? Amazing, amazing, amazing. So, yeah, so great to have you here, honestly. So, thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you and so much for inviting me. I love what you're trying to do here. And I think at a time like this, it's so important to shed share positivity 
hope and inspiration. So I love the message and I'm really excited to be here tonight and talk about, uh, well, maybe my thoughts, but hope and inspiration. So, That's so yeah. <laughs> amazing. Well, do you want to just say a little bit about what you do first, Nate, before I actually go in and ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course, of course. So hi everybody, uh, wherever you are in the world or whatever time of day it is, um, I'm Naomi Eisted, I'm a TV host or presenter um, here in the UK, I travel the world, I travel globally, um, filming travel and style, um, however I'm a mum of two and as a family we travel the world creating content, um, I'm also a property developer, my husband and I are property developers, so funnily enough, St. Lucia for me is like a second home as well. It's where my heart is. It's where when I meditate, my meditations go to St. Lucia. I love America. I travel to the States and work in the States a lot, but I love to the bottom of my heart, St. Lucia. It just gives, it's just such a beautiful, uh, yeah, happy space. So, so that's me. Um, and yeah, follow me on Instagram at some point as well. Yeah. Well, you forget to say, my love, you're also... Uh, um, a host of um, co-host of my mums yes. and you're an Instagram influencer as well my daughter yeah. follows you <laughs> yeah. so, come on. <laughs> it's quite busy and I'm a did I say I'm a mum of two kids yeah. so, and exactly. they're quite young so exactly. that is um, obviously now being in lockdown here in the UK and having two young children homeschooling but also being a freelance uh, uh, you know TV presenter content creator property developer it was it's been quite challenging you know it has been quite challenging but i'm personally using like a multitude of coping me mechanisms to stay positive because positivity breeds positivity it breeds success it breeds a power mindset and i think negativity draws drama it draws negativity it draws you know self-doubt and um so that's why i love what you're doing here vicky oh thank you i just wanted you know how do you juggle everything in the air? Because, you know, this is about, you know, inspiration and, you know, how, we, how you're transforming yeah. with, with lockdown, with everything that you do and the travel and things like that. So how are you actually, you know, having the work-life work balance with everything you do as a, as a global influencer? Well, I think initially I was kind of in shock mode and then I thought, no, come on, Naomi, you're a very practical person. I like structure. I'm very organized. Um, and I started off getting up at 5.30, working out, um, having this major structure. And then I was like, do you know what? You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Relax it a bit. So for us as a family, the key thing is I meditate. I make sure I exercise and meditate daily because that helps as all being together, having a bit more calm, it obviously the endorphins of exercising is essential. We do our daily um, one hour of exercise outside, so I need to be around nature. And if I can't go out for a walk, I'll sit in the garden and just take in, you know, that that time to just be at one and be mindful and um, be grateful. So for me, I start my days with gratitude and basically, yeah, gratitude. And I think it's so important to do that because it is a time where, especially as a creative person, where I'm so used to freedom and traveling and being one day, you know, I'm flying to LA and then I'm flying to the UK and then I'm on TV and I work crazy hours. To suddenly be in this sort of same groundhog day, I've had to be creative with my time. And so for me, I've been doing a lot more yoga. Um, I've been doing yoga with a yoga studio in LA, which has been amazing because I've never done that. And I'm doing yes. just Zoom classes every day. Um, but I think it's always about finding the positives in any situation and that can help you transform as a personality. So for me, I'm using this as a period of deep, deep reflection. Perfect. And what, um, what, you know, obviously with this, you know, COVID and everything that's going on, yeah. what, um, changes, you know, that you've made, would you say that you will, you'll keep? <laughs> Well, I definitely say, like, as you might be able to tell already, I've got a lot of energy. I'm quite hyperactive. I go a million miles an hour and I'm very focused and driven. So for me, I think it's actually taking the reins off a little bit. And do you know, do you know what? You don't need to get it done today. You can pitch that TV network tomorrow. You can do this deal tomorrow. Just be in the moment. So if it's a day where, you know, I want to spend time with my kids, I'm going to do that. Whereas before, I've just gone a million miles an hour for the last 20 years. And now I'm going to be in the moment, appreciate nature, 
exercise more and be more grateful for my health to be honest and my kids health and just surround myself by positivity and I'm definitely not going to go back to the rat race rush and I'm also going to just really um really really appreciate the small things because it's so so important oh it so is isn't it it really so is and so like if we had to say to you from all the places that you've traveled and all the people that you've met and you know being on the red carpet and all the rest of the things that you that you do um entering the new world that we're going into and yeah. you know with all the hope that everything's you know with all the hope that there is what would you know if we had to say to you okay please leave us with one word naomi from you know meet all the people that you've met in in the jobs that you've done going into the new world what would you leave us with it would have to be kindness i want to see more kindness especially in the media industry i want to see more you know it's such a cutthroat industry and it doesn't need to be the the lack of kindness over you know has it's quite sad so now i want to look to the future and i want to focus if someone's moaning or complaining i'm going to say stop change that thought to a positive be kind, be grateful, gratitude is key, positivity is key, and I think it's just focusing on, even if you think you're in a really, really difficult position, always look for the smallest blessings in every situation and you will manifest more blessings. Oh. That is my key <laughs> to the new world. <laughs> oh, amazing, as I say, it, it, you know, it is. We are, go we are all going into a new world, a new paradigm, a new era. And you know that's that's fundamentally important that we're um, we're all in that kind of realm of as you say positivity, kindness, yeah. gratitude. And I love that way the way your six your your one word went into six words. You're just like me. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I can't do one word. As you know, you know, I think everybody on here is the same. This is <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for um, you know for you know sharing your you know your energy with us because that's oh, the thing. You. it's you know what i've what i've said about the whole idea of um the whole idea of hit is um to give inspiration yes exactly and i think that's it's key to life is to inspire one another and i, I actually i would say to maintain community spirit because we'd all lost it and now we've gained it again and that's so beautiful it mm. really is it has it has well i hope you stay on and continue to listen out everybody uh, listen to everybody else so love you so much thank love you Lord. thanks so much for having me you're welcome bye bye everybody oh my gosh eight minutes go so quick don't they <laughs> oh gosh i love you naomi thank you so much <laughs> you, lovely. so um yeah moving on moving on moving on and we can't really go any further you know if this you know we want this to be a journey of travel as well so as naomi's in the uk and we mentioned about our love for saint lucia and anyone that's on this call anyone that's listening to the recording i'm you know a massive ambassador ambassador for uh, the country of saint lucia that um you need to go okay so when travel opens you need to go and we have the most amazing person coming to speak from saint lucia next and not only can he help you in the travel um but we were at the um, another prime minister's event back in back at the end of last year, I think it was. I can't remember. Um, and I'd literally just flew across just for the event. And Richard was the MC, and he was speaking. And I was just like, Oh my God, I need to meet that man. Do you know? Sometimes you you meet you you, you hear somebody speaking, and you're like. I need to meet that person. You know, I'm going to be doing an international event in St. Lucia um, with Sanjeev Chopra, which we'll speak about. And um, it was, he needs to be our MC. He needs to be part of it, you know, and I didn't even know him. <laughs> and then we just connected instantly. And it was just like, please, Richard, can you please be part of this? So we're just going to bring Richard um, into, um, into the house and unmute Richard. And um, Richard, you have your eight minutes, my friend. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Class is in session. Had to punctuate a little bit. So, so pleased and honored to be in your company. And certainly, as Naomi said, I mean, we are in the gorgeous destination, the only one named for a woman. And she will absolutely inspire you at every turn. So, everybody. 
Join me, please. Let's take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. And of course, we took it in positivity. No doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. The question is, in the spirit of constant change, are we unfolding as we should? You know, there's a lot of pressure to unfold and to become. And particularly, and I'll speak for the Caribbean, particularly in the Caribbean, you will find that folks will be very, very um, judgmental and they will tell you exactly what you should be doing. You're 30, by now you should be doing this, you should be doing that. <laughs> um, but let me tell you, it's very, very important. And as a person that has done numerous personality tests over the years, I will tell you, I know my nature. And as a lot of thinkers say, the question is, am I really brave enough to walk that path, to step into my destiny? Let me ask you a question. Imagine this. Each of us, I think, has taken on a role, a job, a gig that we later resigned from because it didn't stir our soul. It didn't sing to our heart. And I think it's very, very important as we think of hope, inspiration, and transforming our lives that we really figure out who we are. Do, I mean, who are you? Where are we supposed to be on this road of life? And I will tell you that resignation was such a blessing because as we all have learned, sometimes in this life when we don't get exactly what we want, it is a wonderful stroke of luck. But seriously, let me ask you, as a friend recently asked me, is your life big enough? Cliche says size matters. Not when it comes to your journey. Everybody's journey is worthy. And for me, I find that there are certain things that really speak to me. For example, very, very simply, I absolutely love nature. And I cannot live at a house without a garden. I absolutely must have green space. And I think it's very important to be able to discover exactly who you are and be that. Now, lots of folks, as they walk through life, they live in opposition to their nature, they literally fight their nature. The job that they do or the series of activities they do are in opposition to who they are. And of course, a lot of us have heard it before. A lot of us are socialized to seek external approval from society, but therein, therein comes the challenge. Because when somebody says to you, you know what, you should just be yourself. The irony in that is, that's not actually a very easy thing. Have you, have you noticed? It is not always easy to be yourself. Um, but the most powerful people that walk this earth are those that have stepped into their destiny without fear. And there's a certain power beyond measure that comes to you when you are walking that path. I didn't introduce myself before. I'm six feet, three inches tall. I am allergic to mediocrity and I absolutely adore cookies and cream ice cream. <laughs> Who you are is really, really critical. And you know something? Folks typically can spot those who are on that journey, which is ordained. And working in the corporate world, I work in marketing, you also find that there is a corporate pressure sometimes to try and clone people. Well, it really is ill-advised. And so I would invite you, and if you can, close your eyes. I'll try and do it justice. I can think of no better words at this time than from a global wordsmith. 
a Nobel laureate of literature who happens to be from St. Lucia. Close your eyes. This is Love After Love by Sir Derek Walcott. The time will come when with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. That's Love After Love by Sir Derek Walcott. And you know what? It really is sharing with us that we should connect more with who we are at our core, pull from our source. And for each of us, that source is uniquely different and that is perfectly fine. But the fact is there are too many of us that are living other people's lives. And I find that in being very judgmental sometimes, we also do that to folks. So for example, we will say, hello, my name is so-and-so, what do you do? And we immediately try to put them in a box or assign a value. But I do think we ought to have a lot more compassion for folks because when you're walking in your destiny, you will be constantly rooted in the hope, inspiration, which is required to transform your life and those around you. And there is only one thing that we like to see broken. And it's new ground. So I encourage you today. Thank you so much for having me on this global broadcast of Hit Talks. I encourage you, step into your destiny without fear and let us all continue to share hope, inspiration, and be transformed. Thank you. Oh my God, Richard, I love you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And, um, you know, it's so funny that you said that because <clears throat> you're saying about, <clears throat> excuse me, connective um, of who you are. And when you started talking about, you know, it's very much like, oh, what do you do? Oh, well, I do this, I do that, I do that. And you just think we're in a new era. And it just, it just really reminds me, I was at um, uh, an international uh, business event and um, it was to do with property. And I met one of the, the top speakers there and I was chatting to him and he said, oh, what do you do? And I went, I'm a galactic unicorn. <laughs> and he was like, what? And I said, yeah, I'm a galactic unicorn. I said, I spread galactic love and unicorn love all over the world. Ooh. And you know, and he was like, I've never heard anyone say that before. And you know, we're connected to this day. And there's things we are gonna do together, but it's, you know, it's not putting yourself inside one of those boxes, isn't it? And it's just like- <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Richard, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So that is, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure everyone else was smiling all the way through that. And again, if anyone hasn't been to St. Lucia, you need to come with us to St. Lucia because we are doing an international event over there, which Richard is part of, and it's going to be truly, truly amazing. So thank you so much. <gasps> Anyway, I'm going to move on to our next amazing speaker. And again, I don't know why the, you know, St. Lucia's in the house again, as far as this is concerned, because only in February, we actually spent a week on the, on the, an amazing beach in the landings together, you know, planning things that we're going to do together. You know, I love this lady dearly. I think she's definitely um, a, a mother, a friend, a, an amazing person in my life from a previous life. <laughs> it's just, you know, when you get these instant connections and you're just like, oh my God, I love you so 
much. Even my daughter was like, oh, mum, I love her. <laughs> And um, yes, she's just totally, you know, you'll hear her talk and you'll just be as mesmerized as I am absolutely mesmerized with her as well. And, you know, she's a, a doctor from the Harvard Medical School. She's been involved in teaching and guiding people in meditation um, for over 40 years all over the world. And as I say, a true inspiration, not just to me and my family, but I'm sure many people over the, all over the world. So I really would like to invite um, Amita, Dr. Amita Chopra to the floor for your eight minutes, my love. Thank you, Vicky. You are amazing, amazing, amazing to use your words. And I love you because you love unicorns. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm um, going to talk about hope, inspiration, and transformation. So remember Pandora? When he lifted that lid of his box, then out flew all these evil spirits and the plague, and they were disrupting the whole earth. And then he understood, just realized the horror of what he had unleashed on the earth. And just then, right at the bottom of that box was the spirit of hope. That is Elpis. And Elpis emerged and she emerged to revive humankind. And she emerged to show us a promise of what our future might hold. So hope is one of the most powerful forces of nature. It is the light that shines our path that dispels the darkness of self-doubt, of uncertainty, of fear and despair. Uh, it, is the, it is hope that gives us the feeling of being strong and secure and safe. And it is hope that makes us fearless. And it is hope that then inspires us to transform. So how do we awaken hope? There are three ways to awaken hope, and it's through connection. And there are these connections that are actually more critical at this point than ever, ever before. The first connection with this is with our loved ones, our friends and our family, and our mentors, because these are the people who will align us to our purpose in life. And so we must connect with them now. Just call whoever you can to keep in touch with them. The second connection, which many of you already mentioned, is with nature, with the earth. And the earth is our mother, and any contact that we have with our mother is very, very healing. So whenever you step out and look at the <laughs> blue sky or look at the night sky with this the stars and the moon and look at the trees in bloom and listen to the bird song, listen to the ocean. When you do all of that, the nature and mother, mother earth heals us just as she's healing herself now through all this chaos. And the third connection, which is probably the most important connection and the most critical of all is your connection with yourself. And that self, how do you, how do you connect with that self? And uh, so knowing, you know, Aristotle said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And one of the uh, Upanishads, they say that know that one thing by knowing which all else can be known. And so when we connect with ourselves, that is when we connect with the universal self. The connection with us allows us to connect with the universal self or universal consciousness or cosmic consciousness. This is a field of pure awareness, pure being, pure existence. This is the all pervading field that contains within, within itself all the knowledge, all the power, all the creativity of nature. The nature of this field is love and light and laughter and peace and bliss and it is this this field is the wholeness this is the holiness and this is the healing that happens to us when we contact it this is the only constant and it's the only unchanging everything else around us changes 
So when we meditate regularly, we not only contact this consciousness, our consciousness starts to expand and it expands with regular meditation. It expands to such an extent that it takes within itself the entire universal or the cosmic consciousness. Now, once you have that, then you have the access to all of those beautiful qualities of nature, the knowledge, the power, the creativity. That's what makes you creative and more productive and a happy individual. And that's where you spread the light and joy of peace all around you. So um, this is the place also where trust lies and faith lies. And this is the place where hope is born. But this hope that's born is real. It's the real hope because it comes from that real you, it comes from yourself. And so this is what really inspires us to move fiercely, fearlessly in the direction of our dreams, our aspirations, and it transforms us to whoever it is that we want to become. And so what I'd like to do is to take the next three minutes to actually connect with the self. And uh, we do a very simple meditation. I love it. It's a, um, it's called the, it's a mantra based meditation. It's called the So Hum meditation. So Hum is a mantra that means I am that. I am that. I am the pure consciousness and I am the universal consciousness. So what we do is we simply sit comfortably and feet on the ground, hands in our lap, looking straight ahead, back straight, and close our eyes. And take a few slow and deep breaths just to center ourselves. And now gently introduce the mantra, so hum, easily, effortlessly, so hum, so hum. So hum. Silently repeat it mentally. And allow any changes to occur without trying to control them anyway. So if your breath changes, okay. If your mantra changes, it's okay. When you get distracted by a thought in your mind, a sensation in your body, or a sound in your environment, Simply bring your attention back to silently, easily, effortlessly repeating. So hum. So hum. So hum. So let's continue this way for the next two or three minutes. Don't mind the time. I will let you know when you can release the mantra. So let's begin. So hum. So hum. So hum.
So it is time now to release the mantra. Keeping your eyes closed. Let's take a few slow and deep breaths. And bring your attention back to your body. And when you are ready, you slowly open the eyes. That feel good. Oh, it's relaxing. That is connecting with yourself. So even if you do it for you know, five minutes twice a day. And for those of you who meditate, please do continue your meditation. So important. But for those of you who don't, even five minutes twice a day is really, really a great beginning. And we just uh, basically regularity is what's really important. And if you don't have the time to meditate once a day, you should meditate at least twice a day. Oh, I love that. I love that ending. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my gosh, who feels so relaxed? It's just like, oh my gosh, we're in the middle of a you know a transmission, a broadcast. It's like, oh my god, I want to go to sleep. <laughs> so amazing thank you so much thank you very much for that and yeah it's so true as Amita was talking about that you know the words that jumped out to me it's actually on my wall and it's trust and you know it's just there to remind me and she was just you know everything that we do if we have faith as she said faith and trust you know connect with yourself and um as as Richard said just be who you are so um Yes, thank you so much for that. It's, um, there's so many words I'm going to write onto my wall now. <laughs> so that um, leads me amazingly into our next speaker. And another one of our, let's say, resident speakers who's going to be with us on all of these, um, these hit talks. And an amazing storyteller. When we speak, which is very, very often, you know, he just has me grasped. He's, he's American. He speaks the most amazing English. You know, he, I pick up the phone and it's like, I've got this country gentleman, this English country gentleman speaking to me. And I'm like, I'm joking. His English isn't very good. <laughs> but he is a, um, he's an award-winning actor, writer, producer, and screenplay um, host. He does so much um, from Hollywood and Broadway. And I would love to invite the floor to my good friend, and um, if I can find him, um, to Rick to tell us uh, an eight minute story. So yes. there you go, my friend, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. It's amazing. Can. This is what hearing so many people speak today and, and that wonderful meditation. Uh, I have to tell you when, when Vicky came to me and said, please speak. And, uh, I thought about it and normally you, you, put together off slides and power decks and thousands of things to get your message through. And hearing people talk today, I said, well, I'm, Vicky said, don't think of anything, just listen and speak your heart, which I thought was a very beautiful thing to think about. Without all the transformation and the bells and whistles and things of what the internet can do, it's really about connection. It's about all of us connecting all around the world, which comes down to a very simple thing of community and to think of ourselves bigger than ourselves. Instead of having the world of me, this transformation of what's happening during the pandemic is now becoming an ushering in the world, world of we. We. That's a powerful thing when you say we. We are a community. When we fall as a people, we fall because we forget ourselves that we are part of a greater community. You, one of the things one of the speakers mentioned was, was kindness. I think that was you, Naomi, was it kindness? Um, yeah, kindness. And she said kindness in the media. And I thought that was an interesting thing because kindness is such a simple concept. Kindness. It's, just, it's, it's and we've lost that. And I think what this does, it, it resets us that we have to think about kindness. You know, what Amit said about the, the, um, 
mother, nature. And I saw this wonderful film last night called The Lift Boy about a, 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 a young boy in Mumbai who, who learns a lot of lessons and he becomes an elevator lift boy for his father who's had a heart attack. And I see his transformation in this movie to loving and kind and gracious to people. All, all these sort of things working through it. And that's what's beautiful about what this is. We need to recognize the kindness that we have to have to create this community of we. But more importantly, I think we need to recognize the miracle that lives in each one of us. The, the miracle that we live in every day. To recognize the miracle. Before the pandemic happened, we were very, it was very set in our ways. We're going to do this. We're going to either be on this show. What are we doing? What do you do? Who are you? You know, uh, if Aristotle says, know, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And if that's true, and I believe it is, that's the beginning, to know yourself. And to know yourself is to understand that there is other than you. And there's a bigger world than you. And what this does is expands our world. You know, we talk about expansion. Expansion is, is, is uh, intelligence and creating knowledge and all those things. And what we do is we're expanding our world. And when we expand the world, we, we expand our community. The miracle of this Zoom call is amazing. You know, I was in uh, Puerto Vallarta, meeting Amit and Sanjeev and Vicky and, 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 and meeting everyone in a cab. And I thought, this is a miracle. I could never meet these wonderful people if I hadn't somehow met this person that brought me here to put me in a cab in Puerto Vallarta to go to a tequila tasting on the beach. I go, it's a miracle you can do that. It's a miracle I could fly 30,000 feet in the air and come and land safely and go somewhere else. It's a miracle. We're surrounded by miracles constantly. And to recognize the miracle, to recognize the miracle of who you are as people, it's... It is not that we are extraordinary people. It's actually that we're extremely ordinary people doing extraordinary things, which means to recognize the miracle in each one of us. So when I think of Richard and St. Lucia and, and Naomi and all the people on this call and the people listening to the call, you're here for a reason. You're actually here for a reason. When I woke up this morning, I was in the worst mood you could imagine. I'd been working all night long, felt horrible not getting along at anyone, angry at the world. I saw horrible things in the news and, and all that stuff. And then I said, how can I be spiritual? How can I be the super spiritual, wonderful person that I have to be spiritual? I'm going to be the most spiritual person on this call with some greatest enlightenment of all time. It's a lot to put on someone's plate, right? And I thought, you know, when you think of it, if you think of all the great uh, uh, people of wisdom in the world, the prophets and all those kind of people, they are ordinary people, ordinary people. Even Buddha, who was a, a, a royalty and a prince, had to go out and see ordinary people to learn that he was part of them, that he was ordinary as well. We're all on the journey together. And once we know that we're on this journey together and we're we in the journey together, then we can understand we hook to a higher power and that's our strength. And once you have strength, you can be kind. All this stuff that's going on now is really fear. It's fear. You know, I went through, I'm in America right now in Los Angeles and what's told to us every day on Fox News and everything else, fear, build a wall, build a wall, all these things, fear, 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 fear. And this call, these people are about love, community, we, understanding that we don't have all the answers at times, but if we listen, we might have the ones we need at that moment. And that's what's great about this is listening and hearing other people and stepping out of myself and getting into other people's lives and seeing myself in another person. Because the greatest commandment, as we say, is to love one another and love God with all your heart in any language. I think in most any religion, that seems to be the, the, the concept we have, love one another. And being here today is our way of spreading our love. Being here today is our way of listening to people, great speakers. You know, Sanjeev is a, a wonderful speaker. I mean, I, I'm, sometimes I, he's a doctorate, read a doctorate. I mean, I hear that. I'm in college right now because I wanted to get a degree so I can teach someday. 
So I went back to school with all the things I do. I, I'm actually in college. I'm learning algebra, which uh, I think a lot of it came from India, Sanjeev. And uh, tonight I'm going to interview someone from India. I saw a movie called Lift Boy. He's from Mumbai. And he said, why do you want to come on my show? Uh, why do you want me to be on your show? I'm from Mumbai. It's an Indian film. You're Hollywood. And I said, well, and I learned this from Sanjeev. You know, Indians, ancient people, ancient religions, spicy food. The chapati is merely a tortilla to me. That's what a chapati is. It's a tortilla. I remember when I was in fourth grade, they taught me all about India for some reason. And 15 miles away from me was Mexico, but no one seemed to mention them. But I learned about India and a woman, blonde woman came with a sari on, my teacher. And she was out there and she was making this thing. She was doing this with her hands and putting this flour on the grill. And, and she brought it out and I said, that's a tortilla. And she said, no, it's chapati. I said, no, it's a tortilla. We had this big argument about that. And of course I was kicked out of the room, but I realized that we're far more similar we're far more better together than apart. And what is the things that are unique and funny to me com comically is our differences. But in the end, we're all from the same tribe. We're all from the same people, just different shades, different journeys. We travel and evolve and all these things. And I guess for me, what this program is, is hoping to inspire others in the most humble way to put aside myself and to stand out even by having a horrible day and hope that God, the universe, will speak to me, calm me, and tell me it's okay, and give me hope. When we talk about hope, hope is there because as long as you're living, there's always hope. And I believe even when you're not living, there's hope because you'll go somewhere else because energy never dies. But there's hope, and we have to remember our hope, and the hope is stepping away from yourself and, and helping others and loving others. That's what I hope. So hope was my word I came away from today. And what a wonderful meditation. It was a so hum. I was, it was a unique meditation, but it really did calm me down. So thank you so much. Is that my eight minutes? You can speak forever, Rick, but no, yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So now that is my eight minutes. And that is, uh, thank you all for letting me be here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rick. Amazing, amazing. And I, I, I will share with everybody when you say about doing your algebra, I must have actually known that you woke up this morning uh, a little bit grumpy because when you rang me, I didn't answer your call. I was like, I'm not answering his call. <laughs> I can feel his energy is like grumpy. <laughs> well, well, I'm not grumpy now. So, I'm, joking, uh, I'm, joking, I'm joking. So thank you all. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, it's... Uh, I'm not going to say the word funny and I'm not going to say the word ironic. I will say the word as Deepak Chopra says, Sanjeev, synchro destiny, because um, as Rick was saying about, you know, uh, ordinary people that do amazing things, that is part of the, you know, the, let's say the motto and the, the mission behind Hit Talks is that it's, you know, it is ordinary people sharing ordinary messages that we can put out there in eight minutes. And, and that's the thing, because we are all ordinary, aren't we? And, um, you know, everyone that's done amazing stuff, you know, they are all ordinary and not being put onto a pedestal. There's a lot of what well, I feel in this new era um, now at the moment, and I have conversations, a lot of this with my clients and the tribe that I'm in is about the gurus or gurus um, that are actually putting themselves upon pedestals or they've been put up on pedestals. And, you know, I think that's all gone now. You know, we're all on the same level. You know, we're all inspiring in each other. We're all putting, you know, love into each other's fields. And, you know, there's, there's no competition like there used to be years and years ago. You know, it's all about working together and togetherness. And yeah, ordinary people sharing ordinary messages. So that's what we're here to do, which goes back to somebody who's extraordinary now for our next speaker. So uh, an ordinary person, that's extraordinary as well. <laughs> and um, again, Dr. Sanjeev Chopra from Harvard Medical School, who's like written over 150 publications and 10 books. And again, we met in, um, in Mexico and connected. And it was, you know, it, again, it was just synchro destiny. And we're doing a international event, which was meant to be in June in St. Lucia, but obviously the, um, 
coronavirus had other ideas, so we're postponing that to November, but we're still very, very much excited to spend, um, spend the time there in St. Lucia and spread the love of health, wealth and happiness, because that's the name of the event. But we will be bringing some hope, inspiration and transformation to health, wealth and happiness. So Sanjeev, thank you so much for being here and I give you the floor, my friends. Thank you so much, Vicky. Uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well. During this time of lockdown, in the midst of this global pandemic, and its attendant chaos and consternation, I've been reflecting a lot on the singular need for exemplary leadership. Perhaps more than ever during these troubled times. So it's a subject that's fascinated me for a very, very long time. If I ask you to conjure up images of great leaders or great leadership moments, who comes to mind? What stories resonate for you? I've had the privilege and honor of writing a book on this topic and I've given a keynote in many different parts of the world, in America, of course, many times, but also Mexico, Canada, Australia, England, Dominican Republic, Kuwait and Singapore, Brazil, some of the countries that come to mind. So what are the 10 tenets of leadership? They include a number of themes that were already mentioned. The first tenet of a great leader is listening. Be a good listener. Listen with heart and soul. Oliver Wendell Holmes at Harvard once said, it is in the province of knowledge to speak. It is in the privilege of wisdom to listen. The second attribute is what Naomi said, kindness, compassion. So in the mnemonic that I created for the book, the 10 tenets of leadership, they spell out, can you pick it up? E is for empathy. So there's a wonderful saying by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. He said, be kind whenever possible. It is always possible. He said, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. E is having an attitude that is upbeat and courageous. D is daring to dream big. Soren Kierkegaard, the great philosopher and theologian once said, to dare is to lose one's footing momentarily. Not to dare is to lose oneself. The next E is great leaders are effective. There's a distinction to be made between managers and leaders. Managers do things right leaders do the right things. Managers are for today, leaders are for tomorrow. You can be an amazing manager, not a good leader. You can be a great leader, not a good manager. We need both and we need to cherish them. The R is great leaders are resilient. To me, the most amazing example of this is Nelson Mandela who spent 27 years in prison. And when he's released, he's asked, Mr. Mandela, do you have a resentment against your captors? And he gave the most beautiful answer. He said, I have no bitterness, I have no resentment. Resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill your enemies. He said, as I walked out of the gate towards freedom, I looked behind at my cell and I said to myself, if you're still harboring bitterness, you will never be free. You will be a prisoner. You'll be a prisoner of the soul. So great readers are resilient. They have a sense of purpose. That's the S in the leadership mnemonic. Mark Twain famously once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. Each one of us has a singular purpose in life. The H is humility. The greatest leaders from Sir Isaac Newton <clears throat> to the Bill Gates of our time 
are humble. Bill Gates did a wonderful show with Fareed Zakaria. It was Fareed Zakaria's inaugural show, GPS, many, many years ago, one hour. And at the end, he turns to him and he said, Mr. Gates, final question. Do you think history will judge you as the person who created Microsoft or the person behind the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? He said, I don't know. I don't know how history will think of me. Perhaps as the person who played bridge with Warren Buffett, or maybe not at all. That's a sign of humility. Great leaders have integrity. Heraclitus was known for his pithy comments. One of his famous comments is, no man steps into the same river twice. It's not the same man, it's not the same river. But one of his longest quotes is about integrity. And he says, the soul is dyed the color of its thoughts. Think only those things that can bear the full light of day. What you think, what you choose and what you do is who you become. Your integrity is your destiny. It's a wonderful quote. So that's the integrity and the P in the leadership mnemonic is great leaders pack other people's parachutes. They nurture. They mentor, they give off their skills and their talents. I call it packing your parachute. Each one of you listening has somebody that's packed your parachute. And you have two jobs. The first one is to thank them. And my plea to you, don't wait for the eulogy. Call them to tomorrow, call them this evening, write them a letter. And the second is for you to pack other people's parachutes. In the ancient Hindu scripture, the Rig Veda, it says, he who gives liberally goes straight to the gods. At the high ridge of heaven, he stands exalted. So be generous with your nurturing and mentoring. Every person I know, every person I'm meeting for the first time, I can feel that spirit just emanating from their souls of giving. St. Francis of Assisi once said, for it is in the giving that we receive. One of my favorite quotes from his is, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words, right? <laughs> Lead by example. So let me offer you my definition of leadership and I'm gonna finish in two minutes. Leadership is the ability to articulate a vision and walk the path such that it inspires others to rise above the banality and strife of their common day existence and achieve a higher and common goal. During this pandemic, leaders of six countries have exhibited exemplary leadership. And those six countries are Finland, Iceland, Norway, Denmark, Germany, and New Zealand. Now think about it. All these six countries have women as leaders, women as leaders. Jacinda Ardern of New Zealand's Prime Minister has remarkably lit up the world with her fearless, brilliant and charismatic leadership. She's decisive, she's compassionate, and she's humble. There is no doubt in my mind that millions and millions of girls and young women around the world will be inspired to emulate her. Our task as adults is to share her leadership story with our children, nieces, nephews, grandchildren. An amazing leader. She was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize last year. She didn't get it. I'm confident she'll get it next year. So each one of you has led and done so with distinction. I invite you to reflect on it and then go tell your story. Each one of you has the spark of leadership within you. Keep it ignited. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And yes, leadership by example. And I'd also like to say, 
Um, Sanjeev is thank you so much as you said say thank you so much to you as a mentor for me as well because everybody on this call you know that's the thing I honestly do believe that we in a way we all mentor and we all inspire and you know we put, all put hope and you know trans transformation into people's lives and um, we do that by you know just by having this connection you know by having us together like this so uh, thank you so much for that thank you <laughs> amazing amazing so as i say there's lots of um, notes that i've made up here as well and what i'm thinking at the end of this as well is actually putting some of this amazing inspirational messages into a pdf um, and sending it out to all the um, to all the attendees. So you know we have all these transformational um, messages and all the messages of hope and inspiration um, in one PDF. So if you think that's a great idea, just send us a message in the chat, and we see if we can kind of get that put together. So um, let's move on. Let's move on, and we're going to move on now to Mexico. Now I absolutely adore adore Mexico. So this amazing lady is living in Mexico now at the moment. Um, she is from the United Kingdom, so you'll be able to tell by her voice. And uh, she's, she, she's just, you will see by her energy, the energy and the, um, the, the, the magic, I will say, that she brings to the, she brings to the table, you know, when we do things together. You know, we trained uh, together to do um, quantum healing because we're, we're certified quantum healers. And, um, you know, when there's, a, when there's a connection and you just think, okay, this is the thing about hip talks. It's getting people together that are connected. It's getting people together that can actually really make a difference, really transform and really impact people's lives all over the world. So I thought it would be absolutely amazing to have uh, Susie with us. So I just need to find Susie now and bring Susie to the floor. So um, thank you so much, my love. Can you, um, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. So there you go, my love. You now have the floor. Thank you so much. Before I kind of get started, I just want to say, does anybody else feel really moved? I have just felt so emotional listening to everybody speak. It's been so beautiful. So I just really, really, I feel hugely grateful, hugely humbled and honored to be in this space. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with somebody and um, she asked me, who do you want to spend time with? And I said, I want to spend time with visionary leaders who are making a positive change. And then today, here I am and I'm just like, whoa okay instant manifestation so thank you so much for that invitation and thank you all so much for the energy that you have brought to your to your talks and what i would love to do is just take a moment to close our eyes once again this is really just for my benefit <laughs> Close our eyes once again, and I feel that we have been rooted, really beautifully rooted. So I would love for us to just bring our energy to just above the crown of the head. And begin to imagine just a beautiful white golden light just hovering above your head. And on the next inhalation, I want you to just invite that light in through the crown, past your third eye, in through the throat chakra. and down into the heart. And allow that heart, allow your heart to just be filled with that beautiful white golden light. 
with every inhalation, just allowing that to expand more deeply throughout your entire body. Bathing every cell, every muscle, every sinew. So your whole body is just filled with light. And whenever you're ready, just allow your eyes to gently open. That was nice. Thank you. It's been really interesting, as I said, listening to everybody. I too, like Rick, or like everybody, listen to Vicky's instructions to not prepare and just allow the transmission to come through. And what I heard when I was listening was lots of people talk about fearlessness and moving through the world without fear. And it was interesting to hear those words echoed around everybody as they spoke, because before I began speaking and listening to Vicky introduce me, my heart was pounding so much in my chest. How do I follow these people? What do I have to say that's really going to cut through, that people are gonna hear, that people are gonna feel? And the feel was so real. And as I've looked around the world in this time of lockdown, I haven't just seen fear from the people who I don't align with 100%. I've seen everybody's fear come up, including my own. I think we might have lost you. Are you frozen, Suze? Is she frozen for everybody else? <laughs> at least she's got a beautiful face to look at. Oh, sorry, Suze, you froze then, babe. Oh, to say, who are the leaders who are really going to step up? There has been so much running around in my head and so much that I've seen running around. in my journey isn't to move forward without fear. The goal right now is to make friends with my fear. It's to observe my fear and know that that is not me know that that is not the essence of who I am. It's not, the, it's not the I am that I am. But the fear I feel and the fear that I observe in other people isn't them either. It's the small part of us that was hurt many, many years ago. It's the small part of us or the younger part of ourselves who was taught not to, touch the, not to touch the oven because it might be hot, not to walk out in the road because there may be a car coming, not to speak to strangers because that might be dangerous, not to trust people because they might not give you their sweets. It's that part of me that feels afraid. 
And when I try to banish it, or when I try to admonish other people who are acting from that space of hurt, of woundedness, from their younger self, I go against everything that I know to be true, which is in the beginning and in the end, there is only love. And the goal right now, rather than to move forward without fearlessness, is to see how much I can love my fear, how much I can love all of myself, love myself in spite of the fear. Because self-love is the ultimate act of divine self-expression and for me is the catalyst for all positive impact. And as a leader and somebody who wants to make a difference, somebody who wants to inspire and lift people up, it starts with knowing that you're okay in spite of the imperfections, in spite of the heart pounding. And so uh, it comes down to that really basic thing, I suppose. It all starts with love. And so that, I've got no idea whether that was eight minutes, but that is what I want to leave you with. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so if you had to say out all those words then, Suze, that there was one word that you want to leave us with, what would that one be word be? Love. Ah, uh, I thought it would be. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so we're going to add that to our list as well. And I'm sure that there's every single person in this room, every single person that's listening to the recording that can resonate with with fear because it's programmed into our it's programmed into our cells um, as Susie said and it's a, a, the main thing as I'm sure we all know but sometimes it's really good to remind ourselves is that it's actually being aware of it as she said it's actually being aware of it it's catching it it's shifting it and it's saying I call it on my shoulder I've got a judgment judgment Julie and you know every time I'm doing something great or something it kind of appears and it's like you can't do that you can't do it it's just like fuck off Julie <laughs> you know go away go away and um so no i really know um i'm sure everyone can relate to that so thank you for blessing us with your presence um susie as well it did freeze out a little bit um but obviously we we did get the whole um the whole idea of that and thank you so much for being here and spreading your love as well so this brings us on to um, another amazing, 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 amazing person. And really, you know, I don't even know where to start here. All I need to say is he's a, he's a warrior. He's a warrior of change. He's a warrior of purpose. He is the most amazing chef, raw vegan chef that I've ever, ever met. And, um, you know, and I, you know, you, you see him and his family and what they do to change the world. Um, he's a superhero. So, his, and his group is actually called the Inner Superhero. So I'm not just saying he's a superhero for no reason. Um, so he is going to share with us. I've got no idea what he's going to share with us because the idea, you know, the whole purpose behind Hit Talks is that he can share and everyone can share exactly what they like because we know that people are, that, that people are going to be in this container, listening to it, being part of it. We're all here for the new world. So, um, Greg, thank you so sorry, Dr. Greg. <laughs> Dr. Greg, thank you so much. I'm going to give you the floor. Thank you. So beautiful to have me here. So, yeah, basically, we're here in this time. You know, what we have to remember is we weren't just thrown here, right? We were demanded to be here. We were like, no, no, I want to be here at the end of the 25,920 year cycle, ushering the great awakening on the planet, right? So we're in the age of Aquarius. So that's the age of truth. So everything that we're seeing now, whether it's something we call negative truth, fearful truth, it's all come down to truth. And truth is knowledge and wisdom, and it's a form of light. So what happens in these end of these cycles is the sun's going to start to bathe us in a massive amount of photons. So we get these gamma rays coming in. So they start flooding 
the whole earth. They start changing our entire DNA. So we're being upgraded through knowledge, through wisdom. In the 1980s, we started seeing the Schumann resonance increase, which is the heartbeat of earth. So the electromagnetism, as soon as we touch the earth, used to be 7.83 hertz. That meant we could take in 7.83 bits of information per second. And bits are beams of light. And light is the most efficient packaging system for knowledge or wisdom, right? So now guess what we're at today? We're at 66 hertz. So we're not at alpha anymore. We're not at just presence that everything's fine. We're not in the 3D world. We're now in the 4D world. So the old version of ourselves is gone. We can't go back to that. The whole new normal isn't normal at all. So we're going back to a higher purpose, a higher self. We're being activated through knowledge and wisdom. The sun is the photonic activity of the divine masculine. As we touch the earth, that's the divine feminine. So we're seeing this symbiogenesis start to happen and coalesce here on the planet where we're all partaking in it. Some of us don't really know what's happening. We're sort of stuck in fear. Fear is at one hertz, right? So we can take in one piece of information per second. If we get to a state of love, we're at 528 hertz. And if we look at what love is, it actually is us. So inside of our DNA, the vibration of our DNA is 528 hertz. That's the vibration of love. That's the divine feminine. Okay, this is what the holding tank is. So in order to heal, we have to get to a state of self-love. Inside of that DNA, you known as photons, okay? This is the light energy, the masculine energy. This is the wisdom, the knowledge, the information. So in order to heal mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, and evolve, we have to have proper knowledge, wisdom, and information encoded in photons, but divinely guided through love, okay? This is how we heal in a big way. So what we're feeling now on a personal level is being felt by every animal, by every tree, by every species, and by the earth itself. The earth is calling for a new, new change, a whole paradigm shift which we're experiencing. So when we start entering and touch the earth at 66 hertz, which is happening today, we're not in alpha anymore, we're in gamma. So what does that mean? Gamma means that we're more compassionate, we're more loving, we're more centered, we're more self-controlled. It helps us to meditate more, go deeper inward, helps us to foment massive change. And this change is happening mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. So we have to remember that we said, okay, I want to be here for this. It might be scary and different, but there is no fear for change. We're basically shedding the old skin. Why does, this, why does a snake shed its skin? Because it's outgrown it. That's basically what's happened. We've outgrown the 3D world of running around in adrenal burnout, having no brain coherence, you don't have brain coherence, we can't get the heart coherence. So now the brain has gone zoop, everything's fine, relax, and we feel it. We don't know it cognitively because everything is so different, so changing, and everything that we knew to be true is completely gone, right? It's pretty much everything. So now we have to go inward. We have to trust our own innate divine knowledge and connect back to the frequencies. So we do that through connecting with nature. We're eating live DMT rich entheophotonic, which is the light of God within food. So all of the information we're getting, a lot of us is coming actually through the food, through the water. So we have to look right now, are we having the purest source of water that we could, the purest sources of food? Are we basically supporting this entheophotonic upgrade in a big way, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Because the emotions are gonna come. You know, that's a natural form. The emotions are the chemical byproducts of our experiences, of our old wiring. You know, we have about 400 billion bits of information coming into the brain every second. We filter it down to less than 2,000. So out of all these options we have, we filter it down to less than one half of one millionth of one percent of what actually is. How crazy is that? So if we start changing our perceptions, we start changing our internal world, we start changing, we open the sensory gating parameters, by trying new things, by connecting with nature, by having new foods, by cleansing, by detoxing, by getting ourselves back into alignment with the spiritual warrior that we were. We have to reconnect back to that, especially at that time. We have to remember why we actually came here. So we connect with the sun, we do sun gazing. You know, Just try something really different, really new. Try a cleanse of the liver gallbladder, do some fasting. Now's the time to really start to transform and say, thank you, beautiful sun energy. I'm gonna upgrade to 66 hertz. 
because the people struggling the most are the ones that aren't going to shed their skin. They don't want to. They love their skin. But what happens is if we're growing too much, our skin becomes our prison. The snake cannot move. Okay? So we have the 3D world that's going to refuse to upgrade to 4D, and that's fine because fear is trapping us down in the frequency of one hertz. We can go 528 times that energy. We can expand our aura simply by just having a key word. We can say shift. You know, you wake up in a shitty day, shitty mood, you're seeing everything just collapse in. You have a cognitive uh, word, it's a, it's a trigger, cognitive uh, trigger it's called. So you go shift, boom. You go do an exercise, whether it's Qigong, whether it's meditation, whether it's hugging a tree, whether it's having a smoothie, having a super awesome shot, sun gazing, you have something that shifts you out of that low vibration that isn't actually you. It's been foisted upon us because we are the divinity of love and light combined. We are divine union. Masculine, feminine, combined. So we are everything that we want to be. We just have to remember that. We have to understand once we get out of that way, we have to switch it and get back into the most beautiful realm of what we are. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. So we're being called right now to massively look at what we've been doing pretty much our whole lives. Has it been in alignment with our soul? Have we been in line with our passion? Because our passion is our purpose. And if we're not doing our passion, we're not doing our purpose. If we're not doing our pur uh, purpose, we're not passionate, right? And we're slowly going back to that low vibration of fear or sadness or grief or shame. We have to transmute these emotions, bring them back up to the heart and understand that we're here for a super divine purpose. We're all like little instruments of orchestras, right? What happens is these guys have been telling us, no, you're not a flute, you're a saxophone. Play the drum, play this. So everyone's like, no, I want to be a drum. I want to be a saxophone. And there's just this sort of chaos now. So now we're coming back together. We're sitting down, we're thinking, we're relaxing. We're getting back to that unit of self. We're saying, you know what? I never wanted to play the drum. I want to play the flute. And as we start getting back to sing our soul song with our purpose and passion aligned through love and light, we start to resonate at the highest vibration that we can. We start supporting it physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. We become a beacon of light for others to follow. And as we lighten ourselves, we enlighten others. And as they enlighten themselves, they start to enlighten others. And soon with our positive image of what we want this whole beautiful earth to become, the earth becomes a paradise because this holographic image that we call reality is being shaped every second of every day by our thoughts. Every second. So we're here now to choose love, to choose light, to choose divinity, and support each other through the massive awakening that the world has seen in the last 26,000 years. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's as if it's practice to the exact timing there, Greg. <laughs> no, if I didn't do it, if I didn't know you so well, I'd say that's actually been practiced, but no, amazing, amazing. And when do we actually start our cleanse, Greg? It's the 17th, isn't it? 17th starts the prep for the liver gallbladder cleanse. 17th, yeah. yes, but yeah. So we just, so you know, I can I can share the details if you if you want me to, to add them into your group or something, um, Greg. But we do every single month for the it's the new moon, isn't it? The new moon, we do the gallstone and liver um, flush and yeah, having having Greg there to support us all the way through, but not having the amazing plants and um, uh, superfoods that you have in Costa Rica. <laughs> It was growing for you, you know, that's the most important part is the holographic image of plants growing right around your entire yard for you. It's an inverting frequency to create that symbiogenesis on the planet. Yeah. Here we just have to look for them. Exactly. Well, we will be. We will be. So thank you so much. That was absolutely amazing. Uh, as I say, it's, it's kind of, you know, you sit back and I'm sure everyone is like me. We're, we're, we're listening to all these amazing, I mean, let's, let's say, amazing, extraordinary speakers, people, light beings. And, you know, there's, there's everything that's coming through is, is, is the same. It's, it's, it's the same wording. It's the same coding. And, you know, we are just being, you know, we're, 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 we're beings in this body and we're here for a purpose. And it's, you know, I'm, I just really want to share from my heart, really, is that when I thought about this, you know, this, this transmission, this, you know, this, this idea of, about getting everybody together, 
and who am I going to get to speak, who's going to be part of it and everything else. And then, as you say, when you meditate, when you get your body um, aligned and, you know, you do the fasting, you put the right superfoods into your, you know, in, into your body, you align yourself with the right people. You're aware of the fear that comes in because it will come in. You know, we, you know, we believe in magic and we believe in miracles, as, um, as Rick said. You know, we have trust and we have faith. You know, we have kindness at our heart and everything else that we really can manifest whatever we desire. And, you know, I'd like everyone to, you know, to think for a moment what they'd really like to manifest and also think for a moment what you would really like to release because you know the reason this um, the hit talks is today on the seventh of May is you know that the dates are not just picked out of the air, but you know it is a full moon, the full moon we release. So I'm going into a water fast, and you know for for a few days, and you just think, okay, what am I going to release? I mean, am I going to am I going to release this control? Am I going to release you know this anger? You know, what am I going to release from my my body, my soul, my you know my my um, my, my, my muscles, because we hold fear in our muscles as well, in our um, different parts of our body. And, you know, what am I going to release? And what am, am I aware of what I'm going to release? And it all comes into place because, you know, even Amita said, and as Susie said, you know, about meditation, you know, we go into the meditation, that we do actually get the downloads uh, when we put ourselves into a quiet space of what we're able to release. And the other important thing I wanted to share about the t um, today as well, the transmission on this day, is for the Mayan calendar, and I don't know if any of you know much about the, the ancient Mayans and the Mayan calendar, but I've been studying the Mayans and I've got mentors um, since my dear friend Veronica introduced me many years ago to it. And um, it is the day of the blue storm, and it's day 13 within the calendar. And... 13 is, is a magical number. It's a spirit very, you know, it's a, it's a very, you know, it's a goddess number. Um, I know for the men on here as well. And the blue storm is all about purification. It's all about transformation. And being on the new, on, on the full moon as well, you know, I just really want us to come off this call and think, okay, what can I, you know, what can I transform from my life? You know, there's, there's the people that have sat on this call and listened to us all. There's people that's listening to the recording. There's us ourselves as the people that are being involved as, you know, the speakers. What can I transform? You know, what can, what can I transform going forward? What can I release because it's the full moon? And it's going to be different for every single one of us. But I can honestly say that when we work together and we transform together and we inspire together then the miracles can happen and people can come into the field and this brings me on to the next person that i'm going to bring on who is a surprise which nobody really knows about and i'm getting all quite emotional now um about it because <laughs> Come on, Vic, keep it together, keep it together. Because, you know, when you do have your faith and you do have your trust, then the universe honestly, honestly does deliver. From somebody from the corporate days who was always dressed in black, who was in the finance and banking industry and, you know, literally on the rat race, chasing money constantly, you know, the corporate lifestyle and everything else and the big houses and the cars and whatever. Um, and then when I kind of came across, let's say, to this spiritual path, you know, people like, you know, everyone thinks that there's two sides. They think that you've got, you can have a business side, you can have a spiritual side, which is a load of rubbish because, you know, we are spiritual beings and, you know, we incorporate it together with kindness, with love, with trust and with faith, and we can manifest what we want. And somebody came into my field again recently and I met this lady in 2016. I was speaking on stage in Orlando and this lady is a singer-songwriter and she was singing just before 50 Cent came on stage to sing. And um, we connected and, you know, life, life, life moves on, doesn't it? And, you know, you go in, in separate paths. But only just a week ago, she came into my field in my meditation. And this is the importance of allowing yourself to trust, allowing yourself to put yourself into this quiet meditation. 
and you know of the four and four thousand eight hundred friends that I've got on Facebook and you know all the people that I know all over the world from you know my many years of speaking on stages she clicked in she just came into my field and I was like so I came out and I wrote it down and instantly sent her a message and she was just like oh my god Vicky you know and anyway it was just magic you know the connection that you know she'd been thinking of me and everything else I told her about HIT and I said I really want you to be part of it and she's written us a song so she's written us a song for the full moon and she is going to sing that song for us and she sang that song for me earlier and i was in shreds of tears so i was going to speak after um i brought this amazing lady onto the stage but i thought no i need to keep myself together <laughs> and i'm just totally blessed for every single person that I've got around me. I'm grateful for every single one of you. I'm grateful for having the, the download for hope, inspiration, and transformation. If I hadn't trusted in the universe, if I didn't have the faith, if I hadn't been traveling the world for the last five years um, speaking in business sector and the finance sector and everything, I wouldn't have built the foundations of all these people that I have in my field. So everything truly does happen for a reason. So I, I really do want to be able to um, bring on to the stage the amazing Sophie Vaughn Matton from Sweden. And I want to pin her, but Sophie, I can't pin you until you put your video on for some reason, lovely. So I'm gonna um, unpin her and then she is going to spread her love spread her magic with us so ah, here she is we can't hear you love Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you. Wow. Mm. Now I'm here in video and in audio. And uh, thank you, Vicky. I love you so much. Thank you for inviting me into this space. Um, this truly has resonated so much with me and it's meant to be. And we are connected now again. I'm grateful and so happy. And it feels so beautiful to just be here with all of you and I want to share a song with you and the song is about hope and the song is about what is going on in the world right now with all this transforming of the planet and the shifting into the new earth and the song is also about that when we are standing together holding hands in our power everything will be so much better. And this song came through as a channeling in the light of the full moon. It is a full moon today. So I feel that I just have to share it with you. So just sit back, relax, tune into your hearts. This song is called Born to Let It Start. Let's start when we stand for 
Thank you so much, my love. I am clapping for everybody as, as far as this is concerned. And I just wanted to say, Soph, as well, I just wanted to share with everybody else that this is the first time that Sophie has ever performed, not on a stage, and she's done it um, raw and real. So I'm just so grateful that you've... Um, that you've shared that with us. It was absolutely fantastic. So I would like to leave it there. That is our song. And we're looking forward to some more songs being written for the Hope, Inspiration and Transformational Talks. The next one is the 23rd of May, which is again chosen because of the Galactic Mayan calendar. And it's all about magic. It's all about self-generation. So I would just like to say thank you for every single person that has jumped on here live. I'd like to say thank you very much for every single person that is watching the recording. And I'd like to also say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all of the speakers and to my dear friend, um, Veronica, as our producer of helping us get in this running smoothly. So I love you all so much. <laughs>